Hey everyone, in today's What If video, we're going to take a look at an alternate timeline stemming from a really big plot decision leading into season three of The Mandalorian. In the finale of season two, Luke Skywalker rescued Grogu and everyone else from Moff Gideon's dark troopers. After spending some time with Luke, Grogu eventually decides to give up his path to becoming a Jedi and return to Din Djarin. Now, I didn't make this video to debate whether or not this was a good decision. The goal is to examine how things would have changed in the timeline of Star Wars had Grogu chosen to continue his training with Luke. If you enjoy this what if scenario, be sure to subscribe for more. I upload all sorts of Star Wars content and usually try to get one or two fan fictions out a month. So let's jump into our story. Grogu looked at the vibrant green blade in front of him. The lightsaber was clearly too small for Luke, but Grogu could imagine it was perfect for him. He then turned his attention to the Beskar shirt that Din had brought him. He missed Din, but he could not help but shake the feeling that he needed to see his training with Luke through. Maybe one day when he was a powerful Jedi, he could return to the Mandalorian who saved his life. But for now, Grogu knew he had to stay. Grogu's training would continue over the course of many years. He would grow to become a powerful Jedi, and because of his slow aging, he would probably still be considered a youngling even 25 years later during the time of the sequel trilogy. Near the end of the video, I'll talk about how Grogu staying with Luke could affect the sequel trilogy. As Grogu picked up Yoda's lightsaber, something in the Force confirmed he had made the right decision. Din Djarin's story would drastically change without Grogu, but maybe not immediately. The scuffle on Tatooine at the end of the Book of Boba Fett would likely have played out much like it did before. The major change to this fight would probably be how the rampaging Rancor was dealt with without Grogu to calm it. The big changes though would come in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, and I know what you're saying, they hardly showed Grogu, so how would things even really change? Din Djarin was on a quest to redeem himself by stepping into the waters beneath Mandalore when a cyborg creature captured him and began to drain him of his blood. In a desperate place, Din could only sit and hope that someone would come and rescue him. Of course, this is where Grogu proved that he could handle himself. Using his newly trained force abilities, he's, he made his way back to Kalevala, where he recruited Bo-Katan's help. The question now is, would Din Djarin have died right then and there without Grogu? Well, it's certainly possible and maybe even likely, but that's a lame story. Din Djarin's newly acquired astromech droid R5 waited for Din to return, but after many hours, the timid droid returned to the N1 Starfighter and flew to Bo-Katan's castle, much like Grogu did in the original timeline. The frantic droid blurts out the desperate situation Din is in, and hesitantly, Bo-Katan decides to follow the droid down to Mandalore. As R5 and Bo-Katan make their way to Mandalore, the events would play out similar to the original timeline, and Bo-Katan and Din Djarin would return to the Children of the Watch as redeemed Mandalorians. In my opinion, Grogu did not influence the overall direction of the Season 3 plot, but he was critical to many of the successes of Din's journey. Even without Grogu though, the Mandalorians would eventually infiltrate their homeworld and confront Moff Gideon and the Empire. Paz Vizsla would likely still fall to the Praetorian Guards and Din Djarin would be captured. While being hauled away by two Beskar-clad Imperial troopers, Din would make his escape. Wrestling free from his captors, Din would move to confront Moff Gideon, and this is where things would get a little bit interesting. After Gideon throws Din to the ground, the Praetorian guards would arrive to finish the job, much like what happened in their original timeline. But seeing Din near defeat, Bo-Katan would swoop down from the fight and step in to fight the Praetorian Guards. With her skills and the Darksaber, she would be well equipped to handle them. With Bo-Katan stepping into the duel, Din would have time to collect himself and the two Mandalorians would be able to face Moff Gideon. But the major change is that Din would not leave Bo's side to go and rescue Grogu. Echoing Bo's words from the original timeline, Mandalorians are stronger together. So the fight would be a two against one from the start. The fight would be intense. Without the additional support of Grogu's force abilities, Bo-Katan and Din Djarin would be pushed to their limits, but they would also be forced to work together in a new way. Passing the Darksaber back and forth, the two would keep Gideon guessing 
and more importantly, confused. He could not fathom Bo-Katan and Din Djarin sharing the Darksaber. I think this would be also a really cool opportunity to see Din stop struggling with the Darksaber and finally learn to use it. Nothing like some high stakes forcing you to overcome a challenge. Eventually Moff Gideon would fall and the two Mandalorians would be able to escape the Imperial base before Axe Wolves crashes the light cruiser into the base. Of course, there's a darker ending to this battle where Gideon defeats Din and Bo because they don't have Grogu's help, but I believe if Din never left Bo-Katan's side to go and save Grogu, they could have beaten Gideon. With Gideon defeated, the Mandalorians would be free to retake their homeworld. Bo-Katan would rule and Din Djarin would be at her side as protector of Mandalore. And hey, for those of you that care, sure, they can fall in love and live happily ever after if you would like that. News of the Mandalorians retaking their world would travel fast. Even Luke and Grogu would hear the news. This would bring great comfort to Grogu knowing that Din was safe. After all, isn't that the struggle with attachment? Fear of losing the person leads to anger when that happens and anger leads to hating what took that person. With a sense of peace regarding Din's safety, Grogu is finally able to let go of this attachment and lean fully into his Jedi training. Luke's Jedi Academy would continue to grow as more students came to learn the ways of the Force. Though Grogu remained a youngling while other students aged faster, Grogu's powers surpassed them all. Eventually he would begin to speak and even teach what he knew. Though he was young, he had decades of Jedi training at this point. Now, two decades would pass since Grogu parted ways with Din Djarin. Though he still missed the Mandalorian, he knew he was where he was supposed to be. That would become abundantly clear when Luke's nephew, Ben Solo, began to be tempted by the dark side of the Force. So let's talk about Grogu's influence on the events of the sequel trilogy. Let's start with the fall of Luke's Jedi Academy. Would Grogu have been powerful enough to stop Kylo Ren from destroying Luke's Jedi Academy? Or maybe taking it a step further, would Luke have been more equipped to train Ben Solo after training Grogu for 25 years? We love Luke from the expanded universe because he became extremely powerful and rebuilt the Jedi Order, but we forget that he struggled in the years following Return of the Jedi. Luke did not have living Jedi masters to train him and show him how things like teaching students and rebuilding the order were traditionally done. Now on the flip side, I think in many ways this is what made Luke so powerful in the long run because he was free to learn about the force without the constraints of the old Jedi code, but it created some challenges and insecurities. You don't have to read very far in the expanded universe to see that Luke really did have these insecurities where he questioned what a real Jedi would do in whatever situation he was in. In fact, that's even part of why he was so interested in meeting Joris Sabaoth before he realized Sabaoth was just a corrupted Jedi clone. If Grogu had stayed with him, Luke would have two decades of experience training a Padawan by the time his nephew began to struggle with the dark side. As Grogu's memories returned, the youngling would even be able to share what he knew about the Jedi Order. In my opinion, this would make Luke's response to Ben's fall to the dark side far more measured and in line with his character. It's very possible that Luke would even be able to prevent Ben Solo's fall to the dark side altogether with the experience he gained from training Grogu. Without Kylo Ren, the First Order would still rise to power, but Luke's Jedi Order would be around to aid the Resistance in the fight. This quick war only took about a year of the Star Wars timeline, but it could have gone even quicker and have been stacked in the Resistance's favor if the Jedi were helping them. Eventually, the fight against the First Order would lead Luke, Ben, and Grogu to stand up against Supreme Leader Snoke. Snoke was powerful, but not strong enough to contend with Luke at full power, Grogu, and Ben. And who knows, maybe we could throw in some other Jedi from Luke's Jedi Academy. Kyle Katarn, maybe? Snoke's defeat would crumble the First Order, especially without Kylo Ren to assume leadership. The New Republic would eventually decide to help the Resistance in the fight. All that would remain at this point were the whispers of a dark plot to resurrect the Emperor. Of course, we could just leave him dead and say that for our story, Snoke was the big bad guy of the sequels, but 
done well, I do like the idea of Palpatine returning as a clone. Perhaps this what if scenario could then set up something like the Dark Empire comics where Luke turns to the dark side in an effort to defeat the resurrected Palpatine. Grogu and Ben could team up to rescue their master and ultimately face Palpatine. I don't know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Let me know if you want a part two going into that story a bit more. Actually, I might just do it because it sounds really interesting to me. So that's it for this what if scenario. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. How would the story of Star Wars change if Grogu had stayed with Luke to become a Jedi? Now, one of the things that is really cool about the way that the actual canon timeline played out is that Grogu staying with Din Djarin really does reinforce the idea of family that is a reoccurring theme throughout Star Wars. They're a clan of two. So I really do love that ultimately Din and Grogu were reunited, but one has to ask, what would have happened if Grogu stayed with Luke Skywalker? I'll catch you in the next video and may the force be with you.